Happy Valentine's Month, everybody. I'm the Sluggers Review, and I'm here today to share with you some of my favorite Valentine's Day episodes from TV shows or even movies. Um, not everything is all lovey-dovey. Sometimes Valentine's Days deal with heartache and everything. So some episodes will be romantic and lovey-dovey, while others will be very like sad and heart-wrenching and stuff but love is love it doesn't always come with like you know smiles and giggles and glee you know so i'm here today to talk to you about american pie 2 ah a good movie where boys became like mature in like the first movie but now they become men so the guys are at college and it's the end of their first year and so like it's weird this is the first american pie movie i saw so i saw all the craziness that happened and so when people kept talking about like because i don't understand why stifler hated finch so much like I, I just didn't know why and then when i saw the first movie i'm like oh okay that's why and stuff and a lot has changed for these guys for the most part for the most part Finch has claimed he's getting it all the time in the college in which he goes to because he goes to a different college than the rest of the guys, but he still obsesses over like Stifler's mom. Everybody else, on the other hand, goes to the same exact college. And, you know, it starts off with a raunchy scene where like Jim is trying to get himself some from this one girl. And so, like, he's kind of blowing it, like always, because he's Jim and everything. And so, I'm trying to say his name like Nadia does. Jim and everything. And so, like, he always blows it. And so, he's trying to do it on the very last day of school. And wouldn't you know, here comes his dad. So, giving him all kind of good old advice and everything. Why he's in this woman. So, <laughs> oh, UG Levy boy, I swear that man, that man. <laughs> and so, like, then as you know, her parents come, um, Jim's mom come. Oh, it's a great opener <laughs> and everything. Tell you the truth, this college looks very similar to that of the one from the sex lives of college girls. I have to do a comparison, but it, it rem something about their college reminds me of a college I saw either in a TV show or a movie. I don't know which. So anyways, um, you know, the dudes, they reunite, but first Stifler's being his perverted self, looking up a girl's skirt, trying to get odds that like cheat on Heather and stuff. And in this movie get more Stifler. And he's a whole, he acts a whole lot better than what he does in the third movie. In the third movie, like, I don't know. This is like he drank way too much and hit his head and just became mentally inept in the third movie and stuff. And so, you know, the dudes, they like meet up. They talk about their college experiences and everything. And of course, Jim is just kind of like, you know, his dopey self. But then they go to like Stifler's party. And this is where we get the famous scene uh, where Stifler's making out with a girl and she wants to pour her like, um champagne down his mouth but then she gets hit in the head and stifler gets peed on and he's drinking pee and has no idea <laughs> from one of the milf dudes and so like as the guys are at the party stifler invited a bunch of like high school girls and a bunch of high school boys tried to like crash it and stuff well you know the dudes they're all like we're not like old guys trying to scam on like younger girls or and stuff like that because they're at a party where apparently there are some younger people there and eventually it gets broken up um because the music is too loud and they need a new place to party um uh, for the summer so kevin does what he always does calls his brother and then his brother gives him a location and some advice and they go out to the beach to where this beach house is now, one thing I've noticed about these American Pie movies that I never really paid attention to until um, Natasha Leon, who plays um, Jessica, she said one time, either in a commentary or in an interview, something I saw, it was one of the American Pie, it, was, it has to do with American Pie. 
It was on the DVD. And she said that this was like a learning experience for her because she's from New York. And she's never been around so many white people in her life. Because <laughs> where she's from, it's very blended in everything. And then when she said it, I stopped and I thought, I'm like, holy crap. This movie is pretty much predominantly white. Like the entire series and stuff. The whole entire franchise. Because when you stop and look at it. It's nothing but like mainly it's made up mostly of white and Jewish people and it's just kind of like where are the Asian people where are the Hispanics where are the blacks and of course myth dude he is um, Asian but he's he doesn't have like much of a role in these like first three movies other than just saying milf 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 and stuff and Christine uh, Christina Million she had a cameo in the first movie, only a cameo, but she's not really an actress. She's a singer, you know, she keeps trying to act. I wish she would go back to singing. She's like black and Hispanic, and it was just like a cameo role. And there was this one black dude in Glee Club in the first movie, but he just has one line and that's it. And the only time they really brought in diversity was in the fourth movie. I'm talking about the theatrical movies. I'm not talking about the DVD stuff. And in the fourth movie, um, MILF dude roles expanded a bit more. Um, they have a Hispanic character. I don't know if she's Hispanic and black, but I know she's Hispanic. And so, like, she was only there to play, like, Finch's love interest. Other than that, she was barely in the movie. Like, she pops in and she pops out. And she just pops in to, like, talk to Finch and then bang him. And that's literally it. And it's just kind of like, man... It sucks because this movie franchise is so great, but it is not diverse in any way, shape, or form. And so they really need to improve. Like you would think in like high school and college, they, they, you don't see like no people of color walking the halls barely in class barely. And it's just an odd thing. So anyways, while they're there, they needed summer jobs to afford the beach house. And so they couldn't do it with just like four guys. So they had to invite Stifler, which pisses some of them off. Kevin is the one who had to invite him. And so Stifler is being Stifler, a nauseous, rude, um, sexist, like everything. But he makes for like a good time for them to have and stuff. And a lot of good comedic, like, you know, hijinks. So they take odd jobs. And one of the jobs they had, they're painting for a house where these two women live in. And Stifler automatically assumes they're lesbians and everything. Because they always like, they, they dress like super hot and they like hold hands. Now this was kind of like your old school more look of a lesbian. There's different types of lesbian looks. You got either the super, super, super sexy hot looking one. And then you have the one that's more, looks kind of like macho kind of. More like a dude, you know what I'm saying? With the short buzz cut hair, the wearing the guy baggy clothes. Um, that type, you know, and so this was like back in the early 2000s. So mainly if you did see like a lesbian, you would see mostly like the super, super hot one, or you would see one that's slightly more tomboyish and everything, you know what I'm saying? Um, they, they had like a short haircut, but it's not really the buzz cut that you see nowadays. And so, um, and so of course, while they're wanting to party up, they want to have a huge blowout party. One that'll make them legends, but they also want to get laid <laughs> and everything. And so, like, Kevin finds out that Vicky now has a new boyfriend. He is not thrilled by this, and he hopes to win her back. But for the most part, he doesn't really have a role in this movie. And so, with Finch, he is still obsessing over Stifler's mom. He finds one of her books, a Kama Sutra book. So he plans on wooing her and wowing the crap out of her by doing some of the stuff that she reads in this book. And so with Oz, Heather is like, I think in South America, um, studying abroad or something like that. And so he's missing her and they can't like be with each other because in the first movie, they never did it. They just like made out and stuff. And then, so now, since then, they've been doing it. And her personality is different in this movie than what it was in the first. In the first one, she was super squeaky clean, like, nice girl. And the second one, everything about her is different. She's more, like, um, 
experience. Let's just say that. <laughs> her tone of her voice has changed and everything. Basically, just the actress sounding like herself, which is kind of a bummer. I kind of like how she put on this facade of being a squeaky keen, like, nice girl in the first movie. Because then it shows, like, acting chops. Even though she did come off sounding stiff and boring. But, um, so they have phone sex, but it doesn't work out because <laughs> the phone somehow, like, um, I don't know, like, it's weird. Like, somehow, like, this dude from a restaurant picked up. <laughs> it's hilarious. Then, of course, when they try it again, Stifler picks up. <laughs> oh, so he's getting jealous, and Stifler's trying his best to make Oz cheat on Heather and stuff. Jim, on the other hand, he's talking about how he doesn't even, not really sure if he's even good in bed or not. Because the only woman he'd been with was the college girl. And Michelle from the first movie. And Michelle literally ditched him the moment after it happened and stuff. And so, like, he, because I think what it is is that Nadia is supposed to come back. And so he, well, that's the thing. And he wants to be, like, amazing for her. But Nadia is so exotic. And that's another thing about the whole all-white movie. Nadia is not even, like, Hispanic. It's a white actress playing, or a white or Italian actress, something like that, playing... Uh, uh, like a Colombian girl, or something like that. It's like it don't make no sense. Uh, I don't know why the world they did that. Anyway, so he wants to be amazing for her, but he doesn't know what it, he he doesn't even know if he's good or not. So there's only one person who can tell him that, and they just so happen to be near the band camp. <laughs> so he goes over there, tries to sneak in, gets caught, and um. It's hilarious hijinks after another. He's wearing short shorts and like everything. <laughs> He's trying to blend in. So anyway, you know he does end up finding her. She's shocked and he tells her, you know, like he needs help um, doing it. Because she tells him he sucked and he didn't know what the world he was doing. But then she's like, wasn't that funny? And he's like, no, that's not funny. <laughs> the Michelle character is now starting to get fleshed out a bit more, kind of. Like, in the first movie, she took us for, like, a wild ride. It's kind of like, whoa, that's what you're about? And then in the second movie, we see more of her dorky side. We see more of her horny side and stuff. It's not really so much until the third movie she becomes, like, a real character. And doesn't always talk, like, so strange and weird. And so, like, she's going to give him um, pointers and practice and tips like that. So she's basically... It's basically sex one-on-one for him, and he has a lot to learn and stuff. And so, like, as this is all happening, those two start to bond. And, like, she's starting to like him, and he's starting, he's, he's just wondering, like, why did she, like, dump him after prom? And she's all like, well, you didn't want, like, a sappy, like, goodbye or nothing like that, you know? She thought that would have been, like, the best way. That's kind of, like, what dudes do to her, you know? So she's kind of, like, repeating that thing. That's kind of sucks when you get to learn that mentality, you know what I'm saying? However, of course, this wouldn't be American Pie without some kind of hijinks. And Jim is our man to go to. <laughs> now, there is no way in the world, and I mean no way in the world, they were ever going to top Jim banging a pie <laughs> on the counter of all things or a table or whatever he was on there's no way you can just there's no way you can top that that will always be in the top that's actually number one and no matter what type of love movie it is that's like number one the most outrageous thing a person can do you will never top that no other movie in history will ever top that that i can think of so of course you can't top it so let's have a nice little number two and so, Stifler, okay, so what happened earlier is that Stifler broke into the women's house that he thought was a lesbian's. Um, he, found, he finds like a dildo. The women come back in the house, they hide, some of the other dudes are in the house, and then the women hear it, they're gonna call the cops. And so they, they, the dudes rush out like, no, 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 no. And so the women are like, well, we're still calling the cops. And, and Stifler's like, look, I just want a confirmation that y'all are lesbians. <laughs> And the girls turn around, they're like, you like that kind of stuff? And they're like, and it's kind of like that porno kind of music. And so it's like, 
for many people watching this movie at the time, it was the highlight of the movie. However, the women aren't fools. They kind of trick the dudes a little bit. They're all like, well, if we touch, you touch in their thing. And they're like, huh? <laughs> they're like, well, if you want us to do some stuff on us, y'all got to do some stuff on y'all. And so that kind of was the point that took people out the movie because they didn't want to see like two dudes doing stuff. And you got to remember, this is the early 2000s and stuff, you know? And so they were like, whatever, dude, we're team players. We got to see this in live action. So first things first, the girls start like touching each other's body parts and they're like, now it's y'all turn. So then Stifler, I think, uh, yeah, Stifler smacked, I think, um, Finch's but I think it was. Yeah, that's what it was. And I mean, and so first he like touches it with one finger. She's like, nah, I want hand um, like gripping action. <laughs> and so then they start playing with themselves and then Stiffer just goes, whack. <laughs> so then the girls start kissing a little bit, but they stop. Every time the girls do something, they only do it for a few seconds and then they stop and they make the boys do it. And the dude's all like, no way, we're not kissing each other. She's all like, well, if you want to see all this, then... <laughs> now, while this is all going on, <laughs> the most hilarious thing is happening. So when the dudes were like painting the house, communicating with one another, they had walkie talkies, right? When the dudes broke into the house, two of them stayed outside with the walkie talkies. Two was inside with the, oh, three was inside with the walkie talkies. Somehow, the frequency of the walkie-talkies went all around town and started getting picked up on intercoms, radio, dispatches, you name it. <laughs> so every person in town could literally hear this going on. And the guys in the background are like, do it, do it. <laughs> and then this one man's at a, a birthday party for his son. And, he, and so it's like, this is going on. You hear the women's moaning in the background and the wife's all like, nice present you bought them. And he's all like, I'll fix it. But then when he doesn't fix it, he's just like listening. And then when they all like, where are you at? He's like, I'm busy. <laughs> So, of course, Jim and Stifler have to kiss on the lips. And it's a long time, too. A lot longer than what the girls did. And then, so, Jim, for some reason, started, like, putting his hand on the back of Stifler's head. And Stifler just, like, smacks his head, kind of like, what are you doing? <laughs> and Jim's just, like, getting into motion <laughs> and everything. <laughs> and then, then, of course, they had, like, they want to throw up afterwards. And then, so, like... He's all like, dude, did you give me tongue? Like, Stifler tells Jim that. He's like, no. He's like, were you enjoying this? He's like, no. <laughs> and then so the first time they kissed, it was just like a peck. And the girls are like, that's how you kiss your mom. Stifler turns to Finch. He's like, you better not say nothing. <laughs> so then the girls are all like, okay, so um, we're going to do a whole lot more. But first, we want some hand jobs. And the dude's like, all right. But they're like, uh uh. We want you two to do each other. And so they're all like, well, we out. <laughs> but Stiff was like, uh uh. I gotta keep this like um, train rolling and everything. So he's about to whip it out. The dudes run out the house. <laughs> and then the girls, they finish themselves off and stuff. And it's just like, it was like the craziest thing ever and stuff. But that's not one of the most outrageous things that happened, no. So because of all that male-on-male -male stuff, Stifler's all like, look, we need some men-on-women action. So he gives them all porn, old-school porn, and the big, like, VHS tapes. Oh, boy, Jim. <laughs> well, Jim had broke, like, a vase earlier, trying to do martial arts or something like that. So he saw Finch doing it. And, of course, this is not their house. It's a beach house they're renting. And so it's somebody else's. And he broke the person's base. So he's trying to, like, fix it with super glue. Well, Jim um, found out Nadia's coming early. So he needs more experience. So he's going to whack himself and while watching porn. And, well, like a good idiot, <laughs> he places the lube next to the super glue. You can probably guess what's going to happen. <laughs> it happens. 
<laughs> his hand is now stuck on his you know what. <laughs> but that's not the only problem. He panics and he takes the VHS tape out the um, VHS. There's super glue on that hand too. So when he tried to toss the tape underneath the bed, try to get rid of the evidence, the tape is stuck on the other hand. One hand on his shillelagh and the other hand on the tape. He panics. There's great music playing in the background. Um, it's, um, oh, what's that? It's um, Alien Ant Farm, Smooth Criminal. It's a remix of Michael Jackson's Smooth Criminal. It is hilarious. He can't open the door. He can't do nothing. He's trying to use like lotion to make the glue kind of like come off. <laughs> but he does it in the shower and it's not working. Why he didn't use rubbing alcohol, I don't know why. <laughs> so he's finally able somehow to call 911. And, uh, uh, and so like... They all like, well, if you have any like um, paint thinner type stuff, that will work. And he does have it, but it's outside in the garage. So he's like, crap. He can't open the door, so he can't go down the steps. His only way is to go out the window. So he's just kind of like, crap. Like he's just outside the window. Well, a woman sees this and thinks he's a burglar. A half naked burglar, I don't know why she would think that. So she calls the cops, and the cops all like, Get your hands up in the air and the gun thrown at Jim and, 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 and Jim just like throws his other hand up in the air that's holding up his boxers. Boxers fall down, butt cheeks are exposed and everything else. And he's all like, I'm glued, I'm glued, I'm glued. <laughs> Don't shoot. <laughs> so they have to call his dad <laughs> who meets him in the hospital. He has a robe on, but his hand is still down his boxers. <laughs> and then his other hand is still glued to the tape. And the, the title of the tape is present. <laughs> and this old lady's all like, son, can't you put that thing away? <laughs> She's all like, that stuff is offensive. And then so his dad makes this embarrassing speech. Beach. <laughs> how about how his son's hand is, is glued to his penis? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so now he has to wear a giant diaper. Why? Because there is a lot of swollen down there. And so he's not going to be able to do what he wants to do to Nadia. And, and he has to use this cream that's going to take about two weeks off or so. So, anyways, at this point in time, he's just kind of like relaxing, you know what I'm saying? And him and uh, Michelle are still like teaching him stuff but and all this other stuff. But then when the big um, night is supposed to come, he's all better now and he thanks her and this is when we find out she actually does like him because she's jealous that he's about to do Nadia and not her and stuff because she actually likes him likes him why Nadia likes him well I have no idea <laughs> and so it's the night of the big party and everything everybody from high school is um who they graduated is there Vicky comes in with her boyfriend Kevin gets upset and runs off the dudes have to like find him and and he explains how like he thought she was gonna be the one and wait for him. Like, he he waited for her and he's never been with another girl since her. And he's been waiting. And it's like really sad, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's his one true love and he can't have her. And so they they like convince him like to get over himself and you know, and there are other women out there in the sea and all this other stuff and so like um, Stifler, he ends up meeting the, um, women from, like, the places, and he's all, like, like, oh, like, great lesbians at my party and stuff, and they're all, like, well, we never said we were lesbians, <laughs> and they're, like, because they're bisexual and stuff, and so he's all, like, he think, in his mind, he's all, like, it's three sometime, he's all, like, I will do whatever it takes, I will shave some butt hair if I have to, <laughs> And so, of course, he has a huge threesome with them that happens off screen. And so, like, with Oz, him and Heather, they finally reunite and everything. They don't really get much of a storyline in this thing. Um, 
because it's mostly just Jim and his shenanigans at band camp. My God, like you won't believe what Michelle did to him when she was teaching him and stuff. Because he gets like horny too fast. She put a trumpet in his butt cheeks, up his butt. And when he farted, it came out. <laughs> and then one of the instructors came in there when they was gone and he put his mouth on it and started playing it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so in a way, Jim's about to like do Nadia, but then he starts telling all these weird embarrassing stories from band camp from his experience this summer. And then he realizes he's making a mistake. He doesn't want Nadia. Nadia's like, what? Why? <laughs> and everything. And he's all like, She's all like, but you're a nerd. And then he's like, yeah, and everything. And he's like, he wants his nerd. He wants Michelle. So he runs and goes find her and stuff. And he leaves Nadia. Boy, like a lot of people were just kind of like, we understand why, but still, you know what I'm saying? And so he runs and finds Michelle and tells her like how much like he cares for her and all this other stuff. So they have a big romantic kiss and it's nice and lovey dubby and stuff. And then the, in the most interesting thing ever happens, Sherman is there, the Shermanator. And so he's talking about how like, oh yeah, make fun of me, call me the Shermanator like everybody else does. Like it was such a nerdy thing in like high school. And she turns around, she's like, yes, you are a nerd. <laughs> Cause she likes nerds now. And then the Terminator music starts playing as he's getting a high, he's like, yeah. And he's all like, I'm a sex robot, came back in time to like, please you, Nadia. <laughs> and she's all like, do me nerd. <laughs> Stifler and Jessica's all like, no way. <laughs> then they look at each other, kind of like sizing each other up. But then they have like a stiff drink <laughs> and they have like, nah, this ain't never gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> that is what's so great about this sequel man is like this up the ante of the first movie and still told a good solid story and had great sex humor but it didn't go outrageous like the dvd movies and stuff or like the third movie the third movie was just like raunchy and stuff like that now i know what you're thinking well what about finch well it wouldn't be an original American Pie movie without a little Finch and Mrs. Stifler action. So she shows up to the party late because she wanted to party with him. And so, like, uh, he tells her, you know what, you're not the only woman in this world. I have to, like, look on. There's other um, prospects for me. She's all like, oh, well, good, Finchy. You're learning. And then so and then she's all like, you want to do it? <laughs> so he's all like, sure. She's like, I got a hotel room and everything. So they go off and they do it. And Stifler, he's all like, well, where's like Finch at and everything? He's all like, and then so everybody gives like a completely different answer, right? But then before that, he sees that there was a car. He didn't see whose car it was. And he's all like, who is that person in the car? And so they're all like, oh, the person's looking for the beach. And he's all like, what, well, the beach is right there. So then that's when he asked where Finch was and they gave a different answer. And he's all like, well, hold up. Who was in that car? <laughs> I am surprised he hasn't whooped <laughs> on Finch yet. Like, you'd think he would and everything. Now, wasn't that romantic? Or depressing, depending on what kind of video I just talked about. <laughs> okay, well, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Bye.